Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Superstars of Wrestling Review Series and we are back for a couple of weeks in July here. Um, July 6th and I think the 27th are available. Uh, we'll do those and then we do have a bunch of stuff into August and beyond. The rest of the year is actually pretty solid except for a couple of missed episodes. But anyhow, uh, Undertaker kicks us off. Undertaker with a choke slam. Undertaker obviously going at it with the Warrior. Sorry if you can hear my heater in the background. Got to record when I can with my busy schedule. Anyway, uh, you know, chokes and basic stuff by the Undertaker. Paul Bearer on the outside. Uh, and a um, side suplex, among other things. Backbreaker and a tombstone. Undertaker folds the man up in a body bag. And that is that. Um... Basically, we move to Gene Okerlund bringing out Miss Elizabeth. Elizabeth, in a black and white dress, basically says she has loved the Macho Man the entire time. Macho Man makes his way down to the ring and says, among other things, I love you and will you marry me? Uh, obviously, setting up the, the main event or the second half. Of the match made in heaven, match made in hell concept at SummerSlam 91. Uh, this has been building for years. What's interesting is that legally they were getting separated uh, within six months of this, divorced by 93. So, uh, not the best time to do this particular storyline for their own personal lives. But anyway, that's that. Blake and Bo Beverly with the coach John Tolis out there. Uh, Beverly's only are with the coach for a couple of weeks. Coach only stays around for a couple of months at most. Um, I guess that experiment didn't work. Bo and Blake are a good team, and they use the uh, shake the greetings from Shaker Heights finish uh, here. Also, lots of good double team moves. I think they were trying to make something like a um, Midnight Express type team, something like that, and. Ultimately, uh, we then see a Jake Roberts enhancement match. Roberts, uh, they still have the Jake Roberts Babyfish Wrestling Buddies, which they won't need that much longer. Luis Spicoli, I believe, is the uh, combatant for today. They won't need them longer because Jake turns in the month of August. Um, short shot and... Uh, short knee by Roberts. Roberts then hits the DDT. One, two, three, and done. Um, then we go to the Million Dollar Man. Uh, hyping the SummerSlam matchup coming probably about a month and a half away at this point. Basically saying he's going to eliminate Virgil. Virgil uh, had a chance to hold a million dollars many times. Had to give it back about every ten minutes after DiBiase had wrestled the Bushwhackers. Talk about wanting to avenge Andre the Giant and also talk about kids going to school and doing that sort of thing. Anyway, um, Snap Mayor take over. Jacques Rougeau, a.k.a. the Mountie, chokes, punches, kicks, and um, carotid artery type maneuvers. Still using actual Mountie disciplinary tactics. Big boss man figure in the crowd by the... Young kids, and certainly a kid-friendly product, except for the shock stick being used by the Mountie. Uh, the Dragon cuts a rather nondescript promo, says he's on fire and here to light up the World Wrestling Federation. Uh, IRS calls every one of the um, WWF members a tax cheat and kind of moves that forward. Bret Hart up next with an enhancement match where he basically uh, makes his way up and... Uh, Actually, no, not enhancement this week. Haku is the opponent this week. So they're giving him a bit more of a competitive match. I was looking at the wrong week. Brett is really featured uh, up through SummerSlam almost, I won't say every week on Summer, uh, uh, Superstars, but at least every other. This is meant to get him over as a more credible guy. Uh, hip toss and the like by heart and arm drags and really basic stuff. Brett brings a good match out of Haku. Not that Haku needs Brett help. Brett's help. Haku, still a, a, a mainstay guy, uh, actually catches him on the crossbody, does Haku into a backbreaker. Haku, still a mainstay talent. He came in in 86 and still is relevant here in 91. I don't think he leaves till 
maybe 93, something like that. Anyway, um, Haku is certainly a big deal uh, for several years. And the attempted uh, crucifix, one, two, three, and Brett gets the surprise victory. Bret Hart happy with that decision. Uh, we kind of talk a little bit about uh, some challenges at um, other things. The update from Gene Okerlund. They plug the two-on-three Sergeant Slaughter, General Adnan, and Colonel Mustafa versus Hogan and the Warrior it's at SummerSlam. This is the famous uh, match where the Warrior held uh, Vince up for half a million dollars before going through the curtain, before performing. So we don't see the Warrior for a little while after SummerSlam. Uh, interesting there, which is actually why Jake Roberts has moved into the um, feud with Randy Savage so quickly, which actually, to me, turned out to be a better feud than Jake and the Warrior. Anyway, Rocker's in, super kick by Janetti on... Uh, the Brooklyn Brawler. Rockers have not broken up yet, but still teasing some dissension. Um, elevated splash by Janetti with the help of Michaels. And we go to Skinner. Skinner basically says he, um, the his opponents won't squeal as, or Gators don't squeal as much as his opponents in the WWF will. Uh, Slaughter, uh, the former champion, Still doing enhancement matches, which I don't quite understand, um, especially when after this uh, SummerSlam they're going to try and turn him babyface uh, relatively quickly, actually. Chokes, punches, kicks, and the like. Camel Clutch eventually gets the victory for Slaughter. Slaughter uh, also hits a gut buster in the middle here somewhere. Um, the big boss fan promises to get rid of the Mountie once and for all at SummerSlam. Uh, and uh, Mr. Perfect, and uh, still kind of going on about the British Bulldog, kind of going on about Bret Hart in his in in set promos. The Bret Hart thing becomes much more vibrant by the end of July, the you know about a month out from SummerSlam, uh, and that that's where we're going. Obviously, Bret does get his first single title there. But that's where we close for this particular episode. We'll be back with more right after this.